In this video, we're going to cover scheduling actions on models in Laravel. So what do we mean by that? Well, basically, we want some sort of action, it could be absolutely anything, to be performed on a model at a certain date and time. And we want this to be very, very accurate right down to the second that we want this to be performed at. So what we're going to do in this video is look at an example of scheduling users to be deleted at a certain date and time. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a demo of this. I'm going to mark one of these uh, accounts here to be deleted now. Now, just before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start up our short schedule, which we're going to look at implementing. We're also going to go ahead and run our queue because we're also going to make sure that we queue these so we're not processing too much in one go. Okay, so now that they're running, let's go over and mark one of these accounts to be deleted. And of course, we're doing this now, but this could be at some point in the future, or it could be a past date, in which case it will always be actioned. So let's go ahead and save this out, give this a refresh. And in a couple of seconds, this should be deleted. And there we go, it's gone. So this is super useful for setting things like blog posts to go live at a certain date, obviously deleting users. It could be absolutely anything, but I'm going to guide you through everything you need to get set up to make this work. So now that we've seen how this works, let's clear everything out, start from a fresh Laravel installation and get everything set up that we need to make this work. Okay, so I've just freshly created a new Laravel project. The only thing I've done is adjust the database settings here and I've also run the default migrations, which has given us these tables and of course our users table, which we're gonna be using to demo this. The first thing that we're gonna do is just add a column in here, a date time, which is gonna allow us to schedule at a particular date and time. So the first thing that we'll do is go ahead and make that migration. So we're going to make that out and let's say add deletes at to users table and let's head over to that add deletes at to users table. So this could be anything. It could be when, like I said, when a blog post goes live, anything like that. And then of course you'd have another column in your blog post that you would set to true based on this date and time. Okay, so this is gonna be a just a timestamp and let's call that deletes at. And really importantly, let's make this nullable because that shouldn't always be filled. Let's really quickly fill in the down migration as well by dropping that deletes at column and we're good to go. So we can run the migration here like so and that's given us that additional column over here. So let's generate out some fake users so we can test around with this. We'll just go ahead and run PHP Art and Tinker and we'll use the default factory on the user model to create these out. So let's go ahead and say maybe 10 or 20 users and create these out. There we go. And we now have 20 users in here that we can start to play around with. So next step is to create the actual console command that we're gonna be running to get this working. So let's go and run php artisan make command and we'll call this delete users. Now, if we head over to the delete users command here, let's go ahead and give this a name first of all. So we'll put this under a user's namespace and just call this delete. And you can fill in the command description if you want to. So how are we gonna get this working? Well, we're first of all gonna go ahead and pluck out from the users. And let's just go ahead and pull the namespace in here. And we're gonna say where deletes at is less than or equal to the current date and time. Now the less than here is really important because if for any reason this is scheduled and hasn't been run and the action should have been performed in the past, we also want this to work. What we don't want here is a really strict comparison by saying equals. If your scheduler stops for any reason or something else happens, you're gonna want prior records to be included in this query. Now what we're gonna do is once we get these back, we're gonna go ahead and iterate through these and perform some action. Now we're gonna be moving this over to a job later, but let's just implement this here now so we know this is working. So into here for each of these, we're gonna go ahead and grab a user and all we're gonna do is just say user delete. Or in here, you could update a blog post like we've already discussed or do pretty much anything you want. Okay, so now that we've got our query, we can go ahead and run this. So let's run PHP artisan users and delete. And of course, at the moment, nothing should have happened. So let's go ahead and mark a few of these or just a couple of these to be deleted, save them changes, and let's go back over, rerun this command, and sure enough, them two users have been deleted. So pretty straightforward in the way this works now, but what we want is this to happen automatically. Of course, we want to schedule this command to happen so we don't have to manually run this all the time. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the kernel and the app and console, and we're gonna go ahead and schedule this in here. Now, there's a slight issue with this because Laravel by default does not allow you to schedule things with any frequency less than a minute. So we can say in here, every minute we want to schedule the user's delete command, and that will work. Now this will work as expected, but if you needed a little bit more accuracy, for example, you wanted to check to be run uh, a very specific time frame, every minute may not be enough. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pull in an additional package, which is gonna allow us to do this. So I'm actually gonna delete this from here, and we're gonna hop over to the Laravel short schedule package. Let's go ahead and install this and see how we can get this working. So let's go down here to the composer command. Let's come over and pull this in. And all we need to do here is run short schedule run. This will hang and it will just run this at the frequency we've defined. Now, if we come down here, we can see how we define this out. So we're gonna basically just copy and paste this entire method over and we're gonna put this in our console kernel here. So let's go over and just indent this. Let's make sure we pull in the correct namespace here. And we should, once this is re-indexed, be able to pull that in and we can run commands now every second. So let's get rid of this command here, this here, and let's pull in users delete. So now this command is gonna be run every single second. So it will go through and it will be more accurate at performing these actions when we need them. Of course, if you don't need this accuracy, there's no point in doing this. Just use the standard every minute command but in our case, I want this to be super accurate. So the first job is just to run this short schedule. So let's go ahead and say PHP Artisan short schedule and run. And that's just gonna hang there so we can keep that running uh, and see what happens. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go over and just test this out. So let's go ahead and fill in the delete that column here, give that a refresh and it's already gone. So obviously the now is gonna give us the exact date and time now. So it would have gone straight away. But of course we could do that into the future, hang around and it will be deleted as well. Okay, so there's a couple of problems with this. Of course, what we're doing is running this command every single second. So if you did want to go down this route, or to be honest, even if you didn't, it would be a really good idea to queue this here. So we want to queue what is happening inside of here. You might be sending out emails in here. You might be doing something a little bit more data intensive than just deleting a user. So it makes sense to implement a job here and queue this, so let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go over to our console here and say PHP Artisan make job and we're gonna call this delete user. So the singular version of this that's just gonna handle deleting out a user. So what we're gonna do is swap this function out here for a short closure and for each of them we will still get the user in and let's just go ahead and actually give the function keyword there. So we're gonna say delete user and dispatch and we're gonna pass that user into there. Now, of course, you could use a standard closure in here if you needed to do something else at the same time, but in, for our case, uh, this can all go in one line. Okay, so delete user, the job should queue, so we wanna make sure this queues, and in here, of course, we're gonna go ahead and accept in the user itself, like so, and let's just make sure we pull the namespace in here, and then the action here to handle this is just gonna be this user and delete and of course we could do other tasks in here we're queuing this now so it doesn't really matter too much okay so now that we've done this let's go ahead and set up queues really quickly i'm going to do this just at the database level but of course if you have another queue driver that you want to use that will probably work a little bit better and be a bit quicker so we're going to generate out a queue table let's do that first of all that's going to go ahead and create out a migration for us so we can just run php artisan migrate and that's given us a jobs table in here which we can use to keep track of all the jobs that are running and we're going to go ahead and run php artisan queue work in just a second over in emv we need to switch over our queue connection and we're going to set that to database it's pretty much all we need to do for our database queuing so now the queue is working what we're actually doing now and we'll just restart our schedule just in case is scheduling these instead of running them straight away now, the reason that this is really helpful or can be really helpful, if we had, say, thousands of users that all needed to be deleted within the same time frame, 
it makes sense to queue these so we don't overload things. You could also make use of chunking if that were to be the case. So over in your command just here, you could go ahead and chunk these by a certain amount. We may look at that another time. So let's go ahead and see how this performs. We've got our scheduler running, we've got our queues running, and let's go over and schedule one of these to be deleted. So let's save that out. This is gonna take a little bit more time because of course this is now being put into our jobs table and then being processed. So it's gonna take a little bit longer and it won't have that same accuracy as if we were doing this immediately within the closure inside of our console command, but it does the job. You can see that's been run and it's worked nicely. Now we do actually have a fail here. So let's go ahead and actually check what's happened here. Um, yeah, so this is a really interesting problem that we get when we're using scheduling every single second. Now, as you can see, that user that I scheduled for deletion was actually deleted. But what's happening is because we're running the scheduler every single second, we have a slight overlap in jobs. So two jobs here to delete the same user were actually created because by the time the scheduler had gone onto the second second, so the first second it would have picked that up and created the job or dispatched the job, the second second it would have done the same because the user was already in the database, still in the database. So basically we have an overlap where we have duplicate jobs, which is not what we want. So Laravel queuing has a really good feature where we can give each of our jobs a unique ID. What that means is we can first of all implement the should be unique interface and then we can come down here and define out a unique ID for each of these jobs or for this particular job that's running. Now what this will do is if a job with this particular ID, whatever we give this, so if we return one, this will not be run if two jobs are currently being put into the queue with the same ID. Now, if we were to just return the number one here, of course, nothing would ever be duplicated because uh, one is just a hard coded value. But what we want to do is make this unique to a certain thing. So in this case, the user ID. So we only want one delete user job in the queue at one time with one user ID. That will prevent that duplicate issue from happening because we're scheduling jobs every single second. Now, it's not advisable to just use a single user ID on its own because, of course, if you had another command which were deleting or updating other things and they matched the user's ID, you could have a blog post with an ID of one and you could have a user with an ID of one. This isn't going to work out. So what we're going to do is just prefix this just with something that makes it a little bit more unique. So the action name and then we'll just append on the user ID. Okay, so now that we've done this, we shouldn't see any more failed jobs because we shouldn't have that overlap. And that overlap existed because the user had already been deleted, but a duplicate job had been put in trying to delete the same user. You can see we've got no query results for model. So I'm gonna delete that out of the failed jobs table and we're gonna try again. Now, really importantly, when we're making adjustments like this, we need to make sure we close off and restart our queue worker. We don't need to do the same for the scheduler, but I like to do it anyway. So let's go over and just try this again. So let's say now, save that out, give it just a couple of seconds to push that into the queue and then be run. And we shouldn't see a failed job in here because only one job was pushed onto the queue. So that is pretty much it. Of course, we've only looked at one example of this, but if you ever find yourself needing to perform an action on a model at a particular date, whether that is set by you or the user or any other process, then you can use this pattern to get this to work. Just to recap, we of course created out the console command that actually goes through, finds the particular query and iterates over and performs that action on each thing. But what we then did over in the kernel is implemented the short schedule package to run this every second to get a bit more accuracy. Of course, if you're happy with this running every minute and sort of saving up things to batch, then you can just move this over to the standard schedule and just run this every minute. Of course, we also went ahead and implemented a job for this just so we can push this to the background and not slow things down, particularly if we are scheduling things every second. And then finally, we implemented a unique ID because we are running these at such high frequency. We don't want any duplicate jobs for these particular models being put into the queue at the same time. So you can expand on this, add to it, tweak it, but that's the general pattern of how we schedule actions to be performed on models in Laravel.